Hello there folks, my name is Ben and welcome to another Shots Fired Airsoft video. Now, I'm going to talk about Nerf today and um, essentially what I've got is a new uh, weapon that um, I'll be using in CQB. Now, it may come as a bit of a surprise, but um, I, although this is an Airsoft channel, I started off with Nerf first. Nerf is my sort of first love. Um, and recently I've been using it it has reached the point now where it is comparable to airsoft in terms of power and usability especially in areas like CQB um, fortunately I play in a very sort of open-minded group and uh, it started out as a bit of a novelty and now people seem to actually quite enjoy playing against it because there's nothing quite like playing airsoft but being nailed in the head by a foam dart at 250 FPS um, <laughs> so what I've got in front of you is my present um, weapon that I use for um, CQB. Uh, this is essentially, if you're in the Nerf hobby, this is ubiquitous. You will know it as a, a worker Caliburn. Um, Caliburn being the name, worker being the brand. Uh, this is actually um, originally a Captain Slug um, design because obviously within Nerf, um, 3D printing has really pushed the hobby forward and enabled people to build stuff like this. So this weapon is almost totally 3D printed. Um, this uh, is actually built under license by Worker who bought the rights to produce it from Captain Slug. Um, one of the rare occasions, um, especially uh, in Nerf for example, where you will see a an actual company, a Chinese company at that, approaching um, an original creator of such a weapon and actually purchasing the rights to produce said weapon. So uh, Worker are an excellent company. They produce some very um, unusual weapons and uh, very effective weapons at that. However, the reason that this is here is because I want to talk a bit about 3D printing. Um, this is not the original Magwell um, that came with this weapon. There have been numerous revisions of this Magwell and uh, this is an injection molded Magwell. Uh, the rest of the gun is still 3D printed. I can appreciate that this is too long to fit in frame so I'm just going to kind of run it under. Um, and as you'll see there are repairs um, to the weapon and what, what I'm going to say, uh, well i say there, there are bits that are beginning to give way. Um, this is an old weapon to be fair to it but it's reaching the point where when you run something like this in, an, in CQB especially against airsoft you run into issues with durability when they are 3d printed when you're playing nerf springer against nerf springer it's all very sort of pump fire pump fire when you're trying to run one of these to keep up with AEGs and gas blowbacks in CQB it puts an immense amount of strain on these weapons this is a very powerful thing um, like I was saying before, this this is presently firing on um, GOS night darts, which I use with a tracer in CQB. 270 FPS with a dart that weighs just under a gram. Um, and that means that it's firing at around a two and a half joules. Um, th obviously, that kind of power, there's a lot of force going through this weapon. A lot of priming weight and uh, it has metal internals so you see it's got that lovely metal piston in there and all that sort of stuff smashing forward and that causes a lot of damage and that essentially cracked the original magwell in half which is um, well known for happening with worker caliburns and uh, caliburns in general with certain revisions of the magwell the other thing with this weapon is it is very long it is almost sniper rifle length um, which means that it is very difficult to wield within um, CQB and uh, not the first nerf gun I've actually had on the channel also had the worker swift which in its most powerful form is also extremely long like full sniper length um, so neither of these weapons is particularly suitable for using in CQB. However, I have been using the Caliburn. It is great fun and I intend to continue using Nerf in Airsoft CQB. On the Isle of Wight, I don't really have much choice. There's not really much of a Nerf scene on the island. It tends to be Airsoft only or paintball. Um, so I've been forced to sort of make do and mend. I say, fortunately, I found a group of guys that are happy for me to use Nerf um, in Airsoft. 
So I'm going to move on now to the actual weapon that I wanted to speak about today, which is going to be my new primary essentially for CQB. So this is a Valkyrie M. And uh, what this is, is there is a blaster called a Valkyrie and it's produced by Leon. And uh, you can see that still on the uh, shell there. And what the Valkyrie M is, is a very compact weapons platform, uh, sort of UMP looking really with forward facing uh, slanted worker mag. And uh, this is produced under license by a company called Black Raisins that supply very high end 3D printing supplies. Um, and also have specialist nerf gear. Now I uh, originally saw this um, on uh, Black Raisin's website and uh, found through various different ways and means that they have a UK uh, agent called Miles Curran and he has been very helpful with me getting some higher end nerf gear over here easily and quickly. Um, a lot of this stuff comes from the Far East and is uh, you, you know your shipping times are like two three weeks for a lot of these things. Um, Black Raisins, having a UK agent in Miles, he can get you stuff very quick off the next day. Um, so it really makes it easier. And uh, I do think that the future of the Nerf Hobby does kind of hinge on the fact that people are able to actually get things easily and quickly rather than, you know, um, having to build and make it and all that sort of stuff. There is always going to be a place in the hobby for that kind of thing. But like Airsoft, one of the reasons that Airsoft is so popular and successful is that you can buy a gun it will arrive, you might have to charge a battery and put it in, you can go and shoot it, it will work. You know, and um, the thing about the Nerf Hobby is, it's some of the weapons that you see, the custom built weapons that people make are amazing and all that sort of stuff, and they will produce them for other people, but it's the cost, the wait time, the inability to get a lot of things, that sort of thing, if, if we can grease the wheels a bit, it will grow the Nerf Hobby a lot faster, and it will have a following more like it does in in Singapore more universally. They're obviously hardcore, um, like the guys on Britain Earth and all that sort of stuff, that are very, um, you know, they, they have like 300 FPS Springer comps and all this sort of stuff. They are well into it. Um, but to, to have it become sort of the same market penetration as Airsoft, we need things like this, easily accessible, tough, rugged weapons that people can get out of the box and use. Um, so this is essentially aimed at that. So this is produced by Black Raisins and this is moulded Delrin. It is a completely different kettle of fish to a 3D printed blaster. It is very tough. It feels more like an ARP 5.56 whereas a normal sort of um, really expensive Nerf gun. Uh, you know, and I use the term expensive as like you know 200 quid. So something like a Lynx Calibre and all that sort of stuff tend to feel a bit more like an 80 quid Simer. Um, if I can give you that sort of, uh, what's the word? comparison uh, so again like I say molded Delrin very heavy for what it is um, the Caliburn is lighter than this and it's about twice the size <laughs> in terms of actual footprint so really quite uh, really quite a nice piece of kit feels great in the hand uh, so we're going to start at the front essentially under this angled foregrip if I rack it back very stout pull you'll see that we have a barrel shroud that sits around the outside and this provides essentially support for the uh, priming rods um, which locks in at the front uh, with a screw that goes through the barrel shroud and contacts the inner barrel that's held in place by pressure of the screw so essentially that's not uh, uncommon that's kind of similar to the way the caliburn works um, not so much with the barrel shroud but the barrel just being held in place because you don't really need that much um, holding force on a barrel uh, Coming back a bit further, we've got, on this particular case, an angled foregrip on the uh, sort of priming bar, and we have some nice aluminium priming bars going back into the weapon. Coming back to the mag rail, like I said, this is a bit different to the Caliburn, and anyone who's uh, in the Nerf hobby will know that this is not especially um, fantastic for a lot of people because it doesn't use straight Talon magazines, and Talon being a very uh, ubiquitous uh, model of uh, magazine in Nerf, which most of these sort of specialist blasters are designed to use. So it does use a talon, but it uses an angled talon. So all my mags from my Caliburn won't work in it, so I had to buy three extra mags. However, I never really get the issue with proprietary mags in Nerf because they're usually like five to nine pound. So if you buy um, a weapon, if you set aside 30 quid for mags, then you've got like three or four magazines. It's not the end of the world. Um, mag release is 3D printed. A lot of the parts on this that are sort of relatively low stress tend to be 3D printed. 
Um, so we've got a 3D printed uh, mag release, which is just a simple push forward. So when you've got your finger in there, you can just knock it forward and pull it, uh, pull the mag out or drop the mag. It should gravity drop. We've got a 3D printed trigger guard, 3D printed trigger assembly. If I just let that go, there we are. Um, I say the grip feels great in the hand. Um, obviously a bit different at the top of the grip, but by the time it gets down here, it feels very AR-15-ish. Uh, coming back a bit further, you can see the bottom of the catch there, and that's actually in the, into the cinder, so you can see the spring sat at the back. Back here, we have some incredibly chunky, just gonna make sure I can catch that on camera, incredibly chunky uh, aluminium bar for the uh, stock, and this works a bit like a PDW stock. So essentially pull it out, locks in place. There is a little bit of wiggle, but once it's braced on on the shoulder, not really going to be a problem. And that has three positions, so it will come. Well, I say it has three. It's not really supposed to be on the last one, I think. I've got a notch this side, but not this side. So I think you really you're intended to use those two positions. So with it out, the gun becomes quite, quite a stretch, actually, to the trigger when it's in your shoulder. For me, for CQB, you can actually use it collapsed. Um, you can really choke up on this thing um, and get it right into your shoulder, which uh, makes it quite nice for priming and, and very stable. And as long as you're happy with sort of um, having a, a, a sight further down the front, uh, you can run it like that and it's not too much of a problem. Um, so there isn't really too much to talk, talk about apart from that. We've got a monolithic rail running down the entire uh, full length of the blaster. And um, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. I say the main thing, the main thing that makes this special is the material it's made from, um, which is incredibly tough. Uh, Delrin is a monstrously strong um, material. It can be machined. It can be injection molded, as we've seen here. Um, injection molding Delrin is a bit of a nightmare. Um, so I'm quite impressed with the job they've done on this shell. Um, they come unpainted because obviously it's a lot of work to paint a blaster and these are already quite expensive. So let's get on to price and performance. So the price of this is about 190 quid um, in the UK. As I said, I got this from Black Raisins. However, uh, there's a chap called Miles Horan who's in the UK and that is, uh, he is like Black Raisins UK agent. Um, he's on the Britain Earth uh, Discord and you can actually get in touch with him and he can uh, get you one of these weapons. Um, and also a lot of very uh, sort of specific stuff um, for playing in CQB, for example. So he has been an absolute goldmine of information and incredibly helpful. Um, it also helps because if he has ear stuff, this stuff in stock it over here, you get it in like next day or two days time, depending on what it is. As pricing goes, at 190 pounds, I don't feel it's too bad. Um, you can pay an awful lot of money for um, weapons that are 3D printed. Obviously 3D printing is very time consuming, it's expensive because of the amount of filament used. Um, and again, the durability of what you get at the end is kind of hit and miss. Not so much an issue if you have your own 3D printer because obviously you can just crank out new parts um, to replace what breaks. If you're buying a 3D printed blaster and you don't have a 3D printer, uh, you're relying on being able to buy the parts from somewhere else or get someone to print them for you. At which point you have no control over the um, sort of general, you know, the print quality, etc, etc. Um, with this, it ain't going to break. Everything in this, everything you touch, everything you see, it's just so strong. You know, the shell is strong, the priming bars are strong, the stock is incredibly strong. Um, it's a brilliant looking bit of kit and I can't wait to start using it. Um, we are going to do a full firing test on this and uh, what I've seen from this so far is even with this relatively short barrel in the front um, we are hitting around 220-230 FPS with worker darts which are the heavier variety of darts that I sometimes use and with the GOS night darts which are slightly lighter so I'm seeing upwards of 250 which is a bob on where it should be um, one of the things I will say is this is built um, with what's a very Singaporean style of uh, ceiling. So essentially, if I just do clamp my finger over the end of the barrel and fire it, you will see that piston go straight forwards. Um, and I actually get air coming out the back of the uh, cylinder down onto your hand. 
um, uh, because this has what's called speed seals in and they are essentially a uh, form of seals that aren't quite airtight so they're sort of slightly loose um, and this is designed to allow you to prime and fire the blaster faster essentially which was one of the things that I was quite surprised about until Miles explained it and he's, he admitted that it was, it was something that new to him but apparently a lot of the guys out in the Far East when they're using the um, tend to have them set up with slightly lower FPS but a worse air seal so that you can pump and fire them faster which I guess makes sense. I will probably be taking this apart, going in and making sure the seals are perfect because apparently with perfect seals and a bit of optimization, you can, and you, you can get this up to 250-ish with worker darts, which is gonna be closer to 300 with the GOS night darts because they're a slightly lighter dart. So very much uh, looking forward to popping this apart and uh, sorting everything out. However, I am gonna leave it like this for the firing test, which will be up soon. Um, I do actually have my run cam scope cam now and this will be the first blaster it goes on and uh, obviously down the line you'll see it on more airsoft weapons uh, so this is quite quite a cool piece of kit I'm very very impressed with it the price of it as well it seems very expensive but um, it's not the end of the world expensive in custom nerf uh, this as a Delrin blaster is probably the most affordable option for Delrin produced um, nerf the only real weapons I know of that are Delrin are upwards of sort of $800 $1000 tends to be a very very rare thing to have anything produced out of Delrin so at, at about you know the equivalent of about $250 to $300 this is very cheap for that um, it's very compact um, it's not light. In fact, I'm going to weigh it. I'll be back in a second with a scale. Okay, so the scale's zeroed up. I'm going to pop the mag in. Um, you actually use, this is a angled talon, like I was describing originally. So essentially, this is the same as a, a normal talon mag, but instead of the top being flat, it is actually angled upwards. And in this blaster, you actually put them in backwards, like that. So the notch is at the front. And then obviously that is, that is in. Okay, so we're up around 1740 grams. Now, nearly two kilos for a Nerf weapon is quite heavy. Um, this is a similar weight to, uh, what did we try the other day? Oh, it's a similar weight to that uh, uh, Double Eagle AEG that we tested. That was just under two kilos. I'm just gonna compare it to the Caliburn because I've never weighed the Caliburn. I'm interested to know if I can get it to sit on the scale properly. Yeah, so there we go. So the Caliburn is actually 1,497 grams. Um, if I just put a mag on there. Yeah, 1,500. So the Caliburn is actually around 200 grams lighter than the um, Valkyrie. Despite being roughly twice the size. <laughs> uh, so just uh, a little more of a demonstration of how the uh, magazines work in this. This has a what's called a Vanguard um, pusher rod. So essentially the pusher rod is machined out so that when you put a mag in, the lips that are on the end of it can pop straight over. So you don't have to prime the blaster back to remove the magazine. Oh, and I'm putting it the wrong way. There we are. So essentially what, what it's saying is normally to avoid breaking the feed lips on the magazine, you would have to prime that back, punch the mag release forward and remove the magazine, which by the way, does have a very smooth release. There's quite a bit of mag wobble, but I'm not especially fussed about that in Nerf, because as long as it's the Nerf dart in the way the pusher it is gonna take it in. But the difference, I say the difference with this being is that you can actually ram it in with the slide all the way forward and it isn't going to break your mag and feel horribly janky. So all you've got to do to pull a mag out is you can have a dart loaded in the chamber, push that forward and just pull it and it will come out. You can then load up or shove another uh, mag full of darts in and just bang it straight in and the uh, dart will just sit under the pusher rod. You fire your dart and then carry on firing seamlessly 
rather than having to, you know, prime it back, pop that out, put another one in, rack it forward, and then fire. So the work of Vanguard is an excellent uh, addition. So right, I've babbled enough. Um, going to be a very cool video with some slow motion, long distance shots. Uh, there's another thing from Black Raisins that I've received, which I am going to have on the channel. And uh, I'm going to do like a full review and first look kind of rolled into one video on that because it's more of an accessory than a, an actual weapon. However, I hope you've enjoyed uh, having a look at something that's nerfed and I'm very much looking forward to getting this out on the field and uh, in my local CQB site I think it's going to be really good fun and I'm hoping but I also know that it's going to hold up very well because it's made out of such tough materials so I've been Ben it's been the Shots Fire Airsoft video and thank you very much for watching see you again